From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. My oh my, today we're going to be dealing with some things that we have not talked about lately, but they really need to be, have our attention. Really, we need to do something about it. This first one, superbugs could cast the world back into the dark ages. Now, who said that? David Cameron of the UK. He said, we need to pay attention to what's happening out there with these superbugs. And then something else that really drew my attention this past week, and that's the natural disasters. Nepal mourns victims of quake that killed nearly 9,000. Can you imagine 9,000? That's a whole city killed. And then going on, International Nuclear Summit points to nuclear risks we can talk about all these summits and everything else, but certainly having nuclear power in so many countries is a real risk and we need to pay attention to it. Jack and I, this morning over breakfast, were talking and he said, you know, Rick Salai, this is such a, an important and such a serious program. I'd like to just lighten it up just a little bit by something that one of his relatives in Belgium told him. It was a joke, wasn't it, Jack? Right. Albert Geekins. And he said there was this Christian and everything that happened, he'd say, praise the Lord, amen, praise God. And one day he was sitting under a tree and a bird made a deposit on his forehead. And I think you know what that means. And he was a mess. And the guy said, you still going to praise the Lord? He says, amen. He said, just think of what would have happened if God had created cows to fly. <laughs> I'd really be in a mess. Oh, I like that in the Flemish yeah. language. As queen, so can it be an act so another pack signs, Ella. And that's Romans 8, 28. Mm -hmm. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Oh, Jack. You know, I'd really like to hear you speak in Dutch sometimes. It's, it's very, very interesting. In fact, he taught me a little bit. At least I can go shopping when I go to Brussels, you know, with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm a need to be health up to oh. I said, you don't spend too much. <laughs> well, we're going to get back to the program now, friends. And I really believe that we need to focus on, as I mentioned, a development that we need to fight. We need to pay attention and fight. It has to do with diseases. Take a look, please, at this first headline. The world's most underestimated disease, a bacterial infection, is killing millions and growing stronger by the day. So why are we not rushing to stop it? You know what that infection is? Well, it's the rapid spread of deadly infectious tuberculosis. Man, I remember that well. And then going on, Ebola outbreak could last, what? Forever. That's the danger if it isn't controlled soon. Oh, we need to do something about that. They, they feel it, especially in West Africa. And then here's another. West Nile virus threat, it's growing. Remember when it first uh, came a few years back? And now it is growing. You know, there are about 3,500 species of mosquitoes, and they don't quite know how to handle it. And then here's another. The killer Spanish flu, could it happen again? Well, you know, that out first outbreak was in 1918. It was very unique. But it is coming again. Could it really happen? And then another. Superbugs could cast the world back into the dark ages. Now, I, I mentioned that is David Cameron said that. Deadly bacteria resistant to antibiotics. That's the prime minister speaking, and he's calling on his government to try and get some new uh, things that would uh, absolutely do away with it. We need to be experimenting and doing away. And then in South Africa, 450,000 people are infected by TB every year. 
Now, as I mentioned, we haven't been talking about some of the diseases lately in our program. But uh, I want to ask Jack, is this found in the Bible? Did the Lord refer to infectious diseases just prior to his coming, Jack? Oh, Excella, did he ever. Now, listen, I'm going to change three words here. We don't believe in the end of the world. Christians quote that all the time. It is wrong. It's a misprint. In the Bible, when it talks about the end of the world, there would be a contradiction because in Isaiah 45, 17, and Ephesians 3, 21, it says, it's a world without end. Unto God be glory in the church through Christ Jesus, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen and amen. Now, when you come to that, always put this. End of the church age. There cannot be an end of the world because my Bible teaches me that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return and set up his kingdom on earth for 1,000 years as a beginning in Revelation 20, verse 4. And he's here as the king of the kings and lord of the lords. And there's no more church because now we worship in the kingdom. What an hour it's going to be. And we live in that holy city of Revelation chapters 21 and 22. And it's 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, and 1,500 miles high. And statisticians have figured it out and said, every human who's ever lived or ever will live will have room there. Literally, each will have a mansion. Now, after the thousand years, there is a group that come against Christ again, but he defeats them and wins the battle. And now his kingdom goes on forever and forever and forever. So that's what this is all about. So don't talk about the end of the world. It's not going to happen. We've got something wonderful coming very soon. Oh, this is exciting. It's about the coming of the Lord and all the signs Rexel is giving you thus far and the one still coming, tell us the coming of the Lord's right at the door. And the disciples came to Jesus in Matthew 24, beginning with verse 3, and said, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the church age? And Jesus said to him, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations, for my namesake. Then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, shall hate one another. Iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world. And then shall the Lord Jesus Christ come. And Rexella, we are at this hour on stations in every nation on earth. And I often preach that the king is coming, and therefore that sign is being fulfilled every week through our broadcast alone. I want you to yeah, show the yes, people. I have a, a weekly television log here. You can't believe it. I'm going to have to sort of expand it out here like this. In the United States, we're on all of these stations. We're on international radio and Every country in the world, oh, how can we praise the Lord enough that he's opened the door around the world for us to get the gospel there. And you know, around the world, so many people are facing what we've been talking about, the diseases that point to the return of the Lord. It's going to expand something else that Jack led me into, and that is the earthquakes Oh, I never heard of so many natural disasters. They're increasing all the time. Tornadoes, earthquakes, floods. Here's one. Southwest Japan, powerful earthquake slams Japan. Well, here you see it. That is the area that it hit. There were over 761 people injured and many killed. And then going on somewhere else, Ecuador, powerful earthquake in Ecuador leaves hundreds dead. 
Jack and I were in Quito. Oh, what wonderful people. And here you see a little 10-year-old looking for her family. They used to live there. She's looking for them. And then Nepal mourns victims of quake that killed, oh, I can't believe this one, killed nearly 9,000 people. Also, death toll worsens in Houston floods. Yes, we're getting it here too. We see the tornadoes and the floods right here in the United States. And I really want to ask Jack a very, very serious question. He's been talking about the return of the Lord. Is all this predicted also along with the diseases just prior to the coming of our Lord? How about that, Jack? Oh, I'll tell you, it's all in the Word of God. And when you get to Luke 21, 25, it also talks about the earthquakes. But it also mentions the sea and the waves roaring, all the floods we've been having. And then he said there should be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and in the heavens. And he said, when you see all these things, you know my coming is near, even at the door. Now, that's found in both of those chapters. Listen carefully. God gave me something this week I'll never forget. We're the generation. People said, oh, we've always had wars, rumors, wars, famines, pencilists, and iniquity abounding. How could those be signs? How many times ministers have used these things and said, Jesus may come at any moment. No, he couldn't. He wouldn't. Why? Because there was one sign there that we never handled, and that was verse 32. He said, get this, it is so important. Learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these signs in connection with the fig tree blossoming, that's when it's near, even at the door. Amen. What's the fig tree? Joel 1, 7, Hosea 9, 10, Israel. Israel is called the fig tree. They stripped and barked my fig tree. Joel 1, 7. Your fathers were the first ripened in my fig tree. Hosea 9, 10. Now you got it? Why is that so important? Because Jesus could not come until the fig tree was blossoming back in existence. And in 70 A.D., the Romans went down and took the Jews out of their land. There was no more Israel until 1948. There was no fig tree on which to base these signs. Now, what's so important about the fig tree? God gave this to me this week, and I got goose pimples <laughs> on my death bumps. Why? There had to be a fig tree, Israel, in her land. And as I said, they were not there for over 1,900 years. And so all these signs were meaningless because there was no Israel to go with it. And he said, when you see all these things in connection to the fig tree blossoming, Israel becoming a nation and controlling Jerusalem, that's it. We are the generation because Israel came back after the British let them go in 1948. And then they took over Jerusalem in 1967. They're both there. Now, what is important about it? Ezekiel 38 and 39, and this is really going to shake you up in a minute. Are you listening? Israel is the place that's invaded for the battle of Armageddon. Couldn't do it. There was no Israel to your generation. And you could find that in Ezekiel 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. Chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice, and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, and 29. 18 times when there's an Israel. And these signs are all happening in connection with an Israel and in control of Jerusalem. And that's when they took Jerusalem back. That's when I'm coming. Now, this is what really gave me chills. I thought, I'm going to check out Ezekiel. 
38 and 39 in his book. This great Old Testament prophet wrote that in 593 B.C., 2,609 years ago. Now, what's so exciting about that? I'm going to show you next week. Everything that we see right now, Russia, China, North Korea, Turkey, Syria, Iran, Iraq, every single name he used 2,609 years ago and said that will be the battle of Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. We are the generation. And we were told for 2,600 years, and no one ever saw it or mentioned it. God gave it to me this week. We'll wait till the next week's program. Ooh, Jack, I'm looking forward to doing that program, that's for sure. Well, you know, I, I have to say, friends, we have been reporting on some things going on in the world, pointing to the return of the Lord. It's so serious as far as terrorism is concerned. We need to rely on the Lord here in the United States, don't we? Take a look at this picture. It really, really touched my heart. God bless America or else or else. Well, we know what happened in Belgium. ISIL recruiting young Belgian Muslims via text. Well, their propaganda is going on there, and they're getting many over there to join them. Belgium's jihadi problem. They've got a great problem. And then look up about Washington. Washington hosts world leaders at Nuclear Security Summit. Looks like they're not uh, very joking there. They're not very happy there. They're discussing about the security of it all. And then the summit points to nuclear risk. Yes, there's a risk out there. So many people have it. Here you see it, friends. Countries that have nuclear weapons and the number of warheads for each approximately 15,350. Well, Russia's ahead of us. They've got more than 7,000. We've got more than almost 7,000, 6,970. Oh, my. The United Kingdom, 215. I could name them all. France has 300. Well, China has 260. And then this really moved my heart. Top jihadist claims Brussels and Paris are terror rehearsals for big attack. Where? inside the United States. Friends, do you recognize why we needed that first headline, God bless America? Oh my, we need to be looking to the Lord and saying, protect us, Lord. But we know that the Lord is going to come and stop all of this. Is that correct, Jack? Oh, this Bible speaks about Armageddon in Revelation 16, 16. So does the Quran. And 2 Timothy 3, 1 says, this know also that in the last day, perilous, dangerous time shall come. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob changes his name, 2 Kings 17, 34, to Israel. That's what's all going to happen. Daniel 12, when there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. At that time, thy people, the Jews, shall be delivered. But you know what? Something wonderful is going to happen to the Christians. They won't get America. I believe the rapture is going to happen and millions are going to disappear. We're going to hear the shout, come up hither, Revelation 401. Why? Because God made us a promise in Revelation 3.10, I will keep you from ek, out of the hour of testing which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that is found, ladies and gentlemen, get this, in the area of the Euphrates River where ISIS is stationed. And listen to this, chapter 9, verses 14 to 18. Loose the four demons! in the great river Euphrates where Isis is to slay a third part of mankind. A third part. And by these three was the third part of men killed. Fire, smoke, brimstone, nuclear weapons. And the Bible is loaded with it, written hundreds of years ago. Isaiah 66, 15, the Lord will come with fire. Ezekiel 20, 47, the flaming flame shall not be quenched. Joel 2, verse 3, a fire devours before them who the Russian and Chinese armies. 
Malachi 4, 1, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Revelation 8, 7, a third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. And it adds in verse 18 of that ninth chapter of Revelation, by these three was the third part of men killed, one third of all the population of the world, by fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic war. Oh, it's great to know Jesus. And soon we're going to be taken. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them, with the dead in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, ha, ha, comfort one another with these words. You're going to miss the atomic war if you're a born-again Christian, for we are the generation. And can you imagine that Ezekiel prophesied it and gave us all the names and all the scriptures and said we'd be saved out of it. Oh, you know, Jack, what a blessed promise we have of the Lord coming back again. But, you know, one other thing I just want to draw your attention to very quickly, not only those 15,000 more warheads out there, approximately 15,350, but also terrorism. We talked about this quite often on our program. And we need to be aware that the religion that is in back of much of this terrorism is not a religion of peace. Take a look, please, at this. Because our president said that it is. The religion of peace? Well, there's no radical Islam. Islam is itself radical. Franklin Graham. Quran teaches its followers to hate. And then again, Franklin Graham says, condemns silence about ISIS, Christian genocide. Slaughter. Everywhere. Yes, Jack. And also Christian population in Iraq drops by 80% in just over a decade. Well, those are Catholic people that got killed. You know, Jack, it doesn't sound like a religion of peace because our Bible says, thou shalt not kill. Oh, Jack, thank you for lifting us up today, though, that the Lord is coming back. I'll tell you about this religion of peace, and it's going to come back on them, and very soon. They're not going to get away with it. Why? They show so much hatred. You got the Shiites and the Sunnis. And one is Saudi Arabia, the other is Iran, and they're slaughtering one another. In Syria, 500,000 Christians were slaughtered and beheaded by their own people. God help us. And now 80% of the people in Iraq and Iran have vanished and be been beheaded. Oh, we're a religion of peace and love. And we even got a president promoting that nonsense. Now listen to me very careful. There is a man by the name of Mark Gabriel, and he put an estimate together as one of the great teachers at the University of Egypt, and he said, my people, and that's what I used to be, a Muslim, slaughtered 300 million Christians since those days, the Crusades. And he said, we're in trouble. Right now in America, we have 300 million guns. You couldn't get them in Germany. They want to kill the Jewish people. You can't get them in any Muslim country. And so they can just take our people and slaughter them, chop their heads off, use hatchets, use knives in Israel right now, plunge them in people. But hear me, they can't control what's going on, and they believe there'll be 500 million guns in America in the next year or two. Watch out. You're not going to get away with it forever. Be sure your sin will find you out. Well, you know, Jack, I just want to say thank you. He's given us so much information here. But the best information of all is that Jesus is coming back. And I would say to you, always in your home, are you ready? Or wherever you're watching this program, are you ready for the return of the Lord? It all points to that. And Jesus is the Savior of the world. Will you ask him to be your Savior Forgive your sins and come into your heart as Jack prays this wonderful prayer of salvation. Jack. The tender Jesus loves you, and he's a God of love. Pray this. Jesus, thank you. I didn't have to kill anybody to get to heaven because you're a Savior who loves people. 
and you died for me and you suffered an ignominious, horrible, agonizing death for me, Jesus. Thank you. And right now, I receive what you did for me. And I'm asking you, Jesus, come into my heart this very moment. Save me so I can be with you forever. Oh, amen, amen. I pray that you prayed that prayer, and if you did, please let me know. There's my address. I'll send you this wonderful little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. You know, you're not living like you want to live. Certainly many of us have been become addicted to something or you're drinking or whatever. The Lord will deliver you. If you prayed that prayer, let me know. I'll send you this wonderful book. And friends, let me just say, if ever you needed to have our wonderful offer of the week, it's now. Who is Jesus? Oh, please make the order right away. Take a look at the commercial. America and Canada beware. Doctors Jack and Rex Sullivan have been warned about Muslim terrorist organizations who are planning attacks in America and Canada in 2016 and 17. The bloody ISIS murderers already claim to be in all 50 states and much of Canada. The greatest heartbreak to believers is the blasphemy against our God and Savior Jesus by the Islamic religion. To them, he is not the Son of God nor the Savior of the world, but instead the executioner of all Jews, Christians, and non-Muslims. For details, order the most dynamic video study the Vanapies have ever released, Who is Jesus? This video indicates we undoubtedly are the rapture generation. And friends, I want to repeat something. If ever you needed to have our offer of the week, it's this one. Who is Jesus? Everybody is uh, talking about who Jesus is. I also have a bonus with your order. So make it right away. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Who is Jesus? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Seller. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And I just want to say, don't put it off. There's an 800 number, and there is the address. And I have my bonus for you. 1,200 times in Jack's book, it says Jesus is the only way to heaven. You need to have this. I'll be sending it with your order. 800 number, there's the, the number to call. So do it right away. We'll get it in the mail. I want to just say that this is so important to my heart. I want to leave you with a good thought. What God knows about us is more important than what people say about us. He knows us, doesn't he? I trust he's in your heart. We'll look forward to being your home again next week and until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.